Hey everyone, Professor Baldwin here, and today we're going to look at how to analyze graphs of quadratic functions. And we're going to look at how to actually graph some quadratics using some of the key points. Vertex, axis asymmetry, if it opens up or down, all of those hints that you get from the quadratic function. So recall our quadratic function, and that's a function in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. A cannot be zero or we don't have a quadratic anymore. Now, the first thing, this blue graph, this is a quadratic that opens upward. We know it opens upward because the A value, that leading coefficient, is greater than zero. It's not a negative number. When we have a negative number, it will open downward and we'll have a graph that looks similar to this red quadratic. That's a very important key because it helps us figure out if we're going to have a minimum or a maximum. And a minimum or a maximum refers to our vertex. Vertex here is going to be this point HK. And I know the letters are a little bit different than what you've probably seen before. You may have seen X and F of X notation before. Same thing. They're only using H and K in this book because if you look down here a little bit further on the page, vertex form of a quadratic. If you're given that H and K, the vertex, you can find the equation for the quadratic using this form. But again, it's still, it's an X value and it's a Y value. You find that x value, or h here, the exact same way. It's negative b over 2a, where the b and the a refer to the a and the b in our quadratic function of ax squared plus bx plus c. And then you find your k or your y value by plugging that x value back into your function. So that vertex, remember, tells us if we have a minimum or a maximum. And... The x value, or h here, is our axis of symmetry. Remember, the axis of symmetry is a vertical line that cuts that parabola perfectly in half. And it's in the format x equals negative b over 2a. Enough explanation. Let's look at our first example. We're given a function, 2x squared plus 6x plus 8 and we need to find the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and the maximum or minimum value of g of x, and then we need to graph the function. So start with our vertex. Remember that the x or the h value here is equal to negative b over 2a. Our b is 6 and our a is 2. So this simplifies to negative 6 over 4 or negative 3 over 2. Then to find k, we are just going to solve g of negative 3 halves. So we're substituting in this x value we just found into that given function. So 2 times negative 3 halves squared plus 6 times negative 3 halves plus 8. If we square the negative 3 halves, we get 9 fourths plus 6 times negative 3 halves is negative 18 halves plus 8. Let's simplify a little bit more. 2 times 9 fourths is 9 halves because the 2 and the 4 simplify to just the 2 in the denominator. Negative 18 halves is negative 9 plus an 8. Add all of these values together and we'll get 7 halves. So our vertex. Remember, vertex is a point, so it needs to be an ordered pair notation. Our vertex here has an x value of negative 3 halves and a y value of 7 halves. We can graph that right away on our graph here. 
So negative 3 halves is negative 1 and a half, and 7 halves is 3 and a half. So our vertex is this point. Now, do we have a minimum or a maximum? Oh, wait, hang on. Axis, is, axis of symmetry. Remember your axis of symmetry. That is x equals, and it's the x value of your vertex. So our axis of symmetry is the equation x equals negative 3 halves. So I'll do a dotted line here. It's this vertical line that goes right through our vertex. Okay, do we have a maximum or a minimum? Well, let's go back to our function. g of x equals 2x squared plus 6x plus 8. Our a here is equal to 2. 2 is greater than 0. So that tells us that our graph opens up. Or we're going to have a parabola that looks like this. If we have a parabola that opens up, our vertex is going to be our minimum. So we're going to have a minimum value. When you're asked for the minimum value of a function, it wants to know the lowest y value. And the lowest y value you'll have is going to be the y value of your vertex. So your minimum is 7 halves. Now we need to finish our graph here. And to do that, we want to find at least two more points. And technically, we can find just one more point and use our axis of symmetry as a mirror to give us that third point. The easiest point for us is going to be able to find our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is when x equals 0. So we need to solve 2 of 0 squared plus 6 times 0 plus 8. And that 0 plus 0 plus 8 or 8. So the y-intercept is this point, 0, 8. If we plot that, that would be up here. The mirror image of this. So this point is one and a half squares from our axis of symmetry. And it's one and a half squares to the right. So it has a mirror image one and a half squares to the left. Then if we connect those dots, we get the graph of this g of x function. For this example of analyzing a quadratic function, we have four different parts to solve. Part A, we need to find the vertex, and we're pretty comfortable with that. The h value or the x-coordinate is negative b over 2a. So we have a negative and b is negative 12. So a negative negative 12 over 2 times a, which is negative 4. That becomes 12 over negative 8, which simplifies to negative 3 halves. Then in order to find k, we're going to solve f of negative 3 halves. So we substitute in the negative 3 halves wherever we have an x. So negative 4 times negative 3 halves squared minus 12 times negative 3 halves plus 9. Simplify the negative 3 halves squared. That becomes 9 fourths. Here we have a plus 36 over 2 plus 9. Negative 4, which is negative 4 over 1, times 9 over 4. That simplifies to negative 9, right? Because these 4s simplify out as 1. 
plus 36 over 2, which is 18, plus 9. The nines are going to cancel each other out, so we're left with 18. So our vertex is going to be the point negative 3 halves 18. Now we need to determine whether this is a maximum or a minimum. And then we need to find the value. Well, we know the value is going to be 18, but we need to know do we have a maximum or a minimum? And to do that, we need to know what a is. Well, our a value is equal to negative 4. That tells us that our graph will open down. And if it opens down, it looks like this, right? That means we have a maximum. Our vertex is going to be the highest point. So we're going to have a maximum. And remember, the maximum or minimum value is always the y-coordinate of your vertex because that's the tallest or the highest y-value that your graph ever has. So we have a max at 18. Now, part C wants us to find the range. Well, remember that range equals your y values. Well, if our graph opens down, our y values only go smaller than 18. So 18 is our largest value. We put a bracket at 18 because we get to the point 18, that's our vertex, and our y values can get smaller, right? The graph is going down. So it's going towards negative infinity for the y's. So our range is negative infinity through 18. And part D wants to know the intervals on which the function is increasing and decreasing. So increasing is our first interval, right? Because our graph is going towards that vertex, towards the maximum. And the intervals that it's increasing, that's the possible x values. Well, it's increasing from negative infinity until it gets to that vertex. And what value is the x value of our vertex? It's negative 3 halves. So from negative infinity to negative 3 halves for x, our graph is increasing. And then it's going to be decreasing on the other half. So it starts to decrease at the vertex of negative 3 halves and continues to decrease through positive infinity. One last problem, and it's an application problem. It's all about profit, and we're trying to calculate the profit equation or profit function for a business. Remember that profit is equal to revenue minus cost, and we're given the revenue function and the cost function. So to find the profit function, we need to subtract those two. So we take the revenue function and we subtract the cost function. We want to put that cost function in parentheses because our next step is to distribute that minus sign. So we have 50x minus 0.5x squared minus 10x minus 3. Now let's rewrite it into standard form. So we want our x squared term first. That's a negative 0.5x squared. Then we have plus 50x minus 10x minus 3. We can combine these two middle terms, and that simplifies to negative 0.5x squared plus 40x minus 3. So we have that profit function. Now we want to find the maximum profit. 
Well, remember the key maximum tells us that we need to find the vertex. So let's find that vertex. And the h or the x value of our vertex is negative b over 2 times a, which is negative 40 over 2 times negative 0 0.5, which is negative 40 over negative 1, which is 40. Remember, this is our x value, okay? And x is the number of units sold. So 40 is 40 units. And in order to find the maximum profit, we need to calculate P of 40. And that would be negative 0 0.5 times 40 squared plus 40 times 0. Point, oops, 40 times 40 minus 3. My brain's not working anymore. Okay, so we get negative 0 0.5 times 40 squared, which is negative 0 0.5 times 1,600 plus 1,600 minus 3, and that becomes negative 800 plus 1,600 minus 3, or our maximum is 40 units and a profit of $797. So max profit is $797 when you sell 40 units. Have a question or a problem that you need help with, please reach out. You can leave it in the comments or you can email it to me and I'm happy to help work you through that problem.